Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode. In this episode, I wanted to briefly discuss a topic regarding workout nutrition, uh, specifically pre- and post-workout, and uh, more specifically related to carbohydrates and protein. This is something that I get asked often enough that um, I thought it warranted a response. Uh, does timing matter? Uh, should you train fasted or in a fed state? Uh, is there an anabolic window, uh, as all the bros and publications claim? Uh, what's optimal? Etc. Etc. Well, here I am to kick you the research straight and hopefully paint a clearer picture. But let's take things in order. Let's start with pre-workout. First, fasted or fed. Doesn't matter. Are there any caveats? According to a study published in 2013 which compared training in a fasted to a fed state, it was determined that neither affected muscle growth or body composition. Thus, either will work and you should go with what feels best for your body. Uh, in my case, I feel nauseous when I train with uh, food in my stomach, thus I tend to go for overnight fasted or a semi-fasted training personally. A semi-fast to me meaning uh, no food within three to five hours prior to training. But are there any performance benefits or risks associated with consuming carbs or protein directly before a workout? Well, let's examine carbs first. According to a paper published this year in January, it was determined that carbohydrate ingestion before a workout offered no benefits to athletes engaged in resistance training when it comes to muscular contraction during repetitions of an exercise. It doesn't mean carbs consumed pre-training will hurt you or your results. It is just that any perceived enhancement uh, in your lifting session appears to be purely a placebo effect. But do note, lifting session, i.e. resistance training, I'm not talking endurance or other athletic endeavors here. I'm just talking about lifting shit up and putting it back down over and over during the course of a workout. So moving along, let's look at protein. According to a paper published in 2005, consuming a protein powder directly prior to strength training significantly decreased growth hormone and testosterone levels while also raising insulin levels during the training session that followed. This was compared to a non-caloric placebo. Both groups consumed protein powder post-training, but only the group consuming protein powder pre-training experienced these hormone changes. Granted, this study was done using dairy protein, so I cannot say for sure how plant protein would have the same effect. But it's better to be safe than sorry, right? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to decrease my anabolic hormone values even temporarily before attempting to crush the weights. So the takeaway is to avoid protein powder prior to exercise. However, whether this advice applies to whole food protein rich sources, I cannot say. I am unable to reach that clarification given the body of research, so I will just leave that choice up to you. That being said, Consuming pure branched chain amino acids before exercise, according to a 2008 study, can help decrease exercise induced muscle damage and promote muscle protein synthesis. So, while protein powders don't appear to be a good idea prior to training, and if you choose to avoid whole food protein prior to training as well, despite the lack of research on the subject, a pure BCAA supplement appears to be beneficial. So, what can we learn from this when it comes to pre workout timing? One, you can train fasted or semi fasted if you like, but if you do, be sure to at least intake a BCAA supplement prior to training. Two, if you prefer a snack pre-workout, possibly stick with just a carb-rich snack like fruit or crackers. Avoid protein powders pre-workout in order to maintain your natural anabolic hormones. And if your workout is three or more hours after a previous meal, consider taking BCAAs with this carb-rich snack. But don't expect any uh, extra performance edge in your lifting from these pre-workout carbs. Uh, do it purely for your own comfort, if anything. Now, let's move on to post-workout. First, what about the anabolic window? I'm sure we've all heard or read by now that you need to slam a nutrition shake within 30 minutes or some such time frame, or you risk not making any gains. But what does the science actually say? According to a paper published in 2012, it appears there is no single answer. In the case of fasted training or those who lift three or more hours after a previous meal, you most certainly should replenish the body after a bout of resistance training, a shake being the quickest way. Otherwise, just ensure you have a meal within a reasonable amount of time after you finish training, but no need to adhere strictly to a magical anabolic window of time in this latter case. But let's get more specific. If you do ingest a post-workout shake, what is the best way to go about it? Protein alone? protein with carbs, or just carbs. According to a paper published in 2015, post-exercise supplementation with just protein did not have any major effect on muscle size or strength results when compared to a combination of protein and carbs 
or just carbs. However, those consuming only protein may experience greater abdominal fat loss. Furthermore, according to another paper published in 2013, aside from the recovery benefits in hard training athletes, carbs don't appear to play any beneficial role in muscle hypertrophy so long as protein is ingested to maximally stimulate protein synthesis. What this seems to show is that you do not specifically require carbs in a post-exercise shake to build muscle. Moreover, you may actually lose more abdominal fat by consuming protein by its lonesome post-workout, for what it's worth. And before anyone brings up the obvious yes, that first study did use whey as the protein source. However, we vegans can use rice or pre-protein for the same effect. A 2013 paper which compared whey protein to rice protein found that both whey and rice protein when consumed post-exercise equally improved body composition and exercise performance. Similarly, a 2015 paper which compared pea protein to whey protein found that both increased muscle mass equally. And since we're on the topic of carbs in relation to workouts, one note on glucose before I forget. And this actually should be taken to heart in general. According to research, a glucose load of 75 grams or higher has been shown to significantly reduce total and free testosterone levels in men, regardless of glucose tolerance levels. Moreover, this suppression lasted up to 120 minutes before returning to baseline. Two fucking hours. So if you do decide to ingest carbs, stick to whole food sources. And if you must ingest sugar or dextrose, keep intake below 75 grams per feed. And since this is generally wise advice, perhaps limit your processed sugar intake, such as soft drinks and candy. Not only are those foods, and I use that word lightly, nutritionally void, they can also make you less of a man for a couple of hours. Just saying. Anyhow, I hope you all found this informative, and if you have gotten something out of it, uh, please like and share it so others may benefit. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to keep on top of regular content updates. Otherwise, Till next time, my friends.